many meetings going on to, uh, right now. Our meeting usually is held at 10 o'clock, but we uh, want to try to accommodate some special guests to come and educate uh, uh, the public and the committee regarding uh, alternative medicines that can be used for pain and suffering. Specifically, a marijuana being legalized as a, uh, uh, for medical purposes only. Uh, and so the purpose of this meeting of the Science Technology Committee is to gather information educate the public to provide information. We have two speakers and we have a, a two other individuals who are going to make a brief comment regarding their medical condition. We have two individuals uh, before I uh, present our main presenter, uh, Dr. Elvis, who just arrived. I do have two presenters, uh, Gene Marlow uh, from Mill Spring, North Carolina, Hope County, and Dixie Beerman. Um, I forgot what candidate is. And if you all could come up to this microphone and get uh, make three minute, about three minute statement and point up uh, in a real, uh, I guess, real life way how individuals uh, may, may need us to consider uh, our partial on marijuana for that good use. Ms. Marlowe, if you state your name and address. My name is Jean Marlowe. I'm from Mill Spring, North Carolina. That's Pope County. It's up in the western part of the foothills. I was born with a rare liver disorder that left me allergic to everything from Kool-Aid to alcohol, Tylenol to morphine. I was allergic to makeup and hairspray and perfume as a young girl. And uh, it was kind of rough. But uh, in 1986, I fell and crushed my leg and I began having muscle spasticity disorder. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, uh, re uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, and all of the medications that they would try me on would leave me thrown up in a bucket, unable to function, I couldn't balance my checkbook, I couldn't take part in my daughter's life, uh, I stayed sick all the time and a fog all the time. And a nurse from Virginia came to visit one day. She was uh, related to my ex-husband. She said, you know, she said, the VA hospital, she said, they have had some luck with marijuana. She said, help them with patients, the Vietnam vets. She said, won't you try that? So she kind of fussed at my ex-husband. She said, you go get her something. So he did, and when I had the next bad muscle spasm, I smoked that marijuana. And within five minutes, my stomach stopped shaking for the first time in over five years. And when he did, I took all of them down and I flushed them down my toilet. I had problems with pills and then I was arrested we're going on TV because Social Service, uh, Social Security Administration acknowledged as a disabled person I had a problem, couldn't take pills, and that I used cannabis. I did an interview on TV, the local cops targeted me and arrested me, went through a prosecution. Judge Warren here, and he was the judge, and the case was basically dismissed. We went down to a simple possession charge. And he ordered the return of my drug clip. And uh, it grows really good chamomile and sage and all the other herbs that I need. And uh, then the federal government got involved because I got a package in the mail from a farm in Switzerland that had it. So they arrested me. I wound up doing 10 months in federal prison because of it. I saw a lot of racial disparities and how women and their families were targeted because they didn't know anything in the drug war the way it had become. Patients, if you're ever convicted and you have a felony, then never, never again can you get food stamps or public housing and you're punished for the rest of your life. If you're trying to ease your suffering with a God-given earth. And under the Constitution, of North Carolina, which was in existence before the federal one was. But I know they both say we have equal treatment, equal protection under the law. And the federal government gives this medicine in rolled up joints to citizens and has for over 25 years. 
But the rest of the people, they call it, they brand them as a criminal. Police officers will target a patient because they say, oh, well, it's an easy felony. I know they grow up their meds. We just went through that in our county, and the judge had to throw it out again. Another Superior Court judge proved that the cops made it up and willfully prosecuted somebody just because of the situation. So this type of legislation is necessary in our state to help patients and to protect them. And I thank you for what consider it. Thank you, Ms. Marlon. One other person, Ms. Dixie Dearman. If you could state your address and where you're from. Yes, I'm Dixie Dearman. Um, I live at 113 Clinton Avenue in Asheville, North Carolina, in Buncombe County. I've been a registered nurse for 20 years. I've seen patients that would have benefited from cannabis with innumerable conditions. I have also known personally patients who were shared with me honestly in my uh, medical capacity as their caregiver, th that they were also uh, doing cannabis in addition to some other ther therapeutic medications or um, to its exclusion. And uh, I've seen the difference. I've, I've been able to be privy to see some tracking on, the, on this efficacy. And uh, I believe that more study of course is required, but mostly to validate what has already been published um, internationally and in this, in this, in America as well, and in numerous other states that have passed similar legislation. Um, personally, I was born with a systemic vascular disorder that causes pain about a scale of eight to 10 every day. And uh, it's all I can do to function. Uh, I do the gutting through it. I, I do everything I can. But obviously, since I had it from birth, I've been given every diet, every regime, every medication, every conceivable form of pain medication, and all it served to do, frankly, was to make me intensely allergic to all of them, including morphine and morphine patches and everything else that anyone else could hope to eventually um, benefit from. Those options are not mine any longer. Uh, and my physician has um, written me a prescription. It is not um, validated, it is not recognized in this state. Uh, but he knows as well as I that Marinol would not work for me, did not work for me, and it is not a viable option. I encourage um, North Carolina State Legislature and all its supporters to please support this bill and future ones like it, and to turn what has been um, a house of cards and a house of pain into helping millions and millions of people. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Bill, the bill has, has presently been requested to be moved into rules. We do have a copy of the bill. It's a steady bill. And what we're asking is that the uh, leadership uh, in the interim, uh, uh, between now and January when we get out of the short session, establish a study committee to study um, whether this state, the state of North Carolina, should legalize marijuana for medical uh, use just as it's legalized for medical use in 12 other states. Uh, so, so the bill is a study bill, and the leadership will decide that at the end of the session as to whether it's established a study. Uh, the, the, the leadership has did establish a study for embryonic stem cell research, and as a result of that, that legislation did pass the House once the public and the legislators majority of them can't be educated and it's credibly dependent in the Senate. Yeah, working on that uh, as we speak. Uh, we do have, I just want to make that clarification that it's a study bill. Uh, and depending on whether we have a study, uh, depending on the result of the uh, legislative study committee's uh, recommendation, will determine whether a bill will be presented in the, uh, in, in the North Carolina House in January uh, of 2009. 